This is a quiz of the United States capitals. There are 50 states, so there are 50 questions. This quiz was built with hype and some custom JavaScript code. You could build a quiz with hype without having to add any custom code at all. Just make a scene for each question. However, the capitals template is dynamic. The questions appear randomly and the final score is displayed at the end of the quiz. This is another example of how adding a little bit of JavaScript can allow you to create some fairly powerful projects. So, how does it work? The first step is to look at the capitals function. This is loaded when the title screen scene is first loaded. The main part of the project is built around a multi-dimensional array. If that sounds complicated, just think of it as a spreadsheet. You have rows and you have columns. Each row is a question. It has five parts. The state, the option for choice A, the option for choice B, the option for choice C, and the option for choice D. There's also the answer. Which one of the options is correct? Each pair of brackets represents an array. All of those arrays go into the main array. That's why it's called a multi-dimensional array. If that sounds confusing, there's a nice solution. You don't have to type all of these brackets. Just make your questions in a spreadsheet. Apple's Numbers app is great for this. First, a header row is added to describe the columns. Then, each additional row is a question. From here, you could export a comma-separated values file, or you could just copy the table. Next, there's a handy website called Mr. Data Converter. By pasting the data into the top area, and then selecting JavaScript Object Notation Row Arrays, the quiz questions are formatted to work with the Hype template. When working with third-party websites, it's important to be mindful of potential security issues, but since the data in this project is already public, I wasn't too worried about it. But if you are worried about it, that's good. Just export a CSV file and change the formatting yourself. Even without automation, it's a little tedious, but not too bad. The point is to convert a spreadsheet into an array. This is stored with the window.data global attribute. Storing this array as a window variable might make seasoned web developers cringe. Here I'm using global attributes because I want other hype functions to be able to access this data. However, that's exactly the problem. Because this value is so accessible and so generic, other JavaScript code on the page could access it too. That includes other hype projects on the page. As an example, what if you had two quizzes on the page that both use window.data as a variable name. Boom, code collision. To solve this problem, Hype has the hype document .custom data API. It says, an object to put any user-defined data associated with the tumult hype document. Instead of putting window.data, hype document .custom data .data could be used instead. That makes the data accessible within the Hype project but better separated from code beyond the Hype project. I'm actually going to change that now. So if you're using an older version of the Capitals template, visit photix.com to download the newer version. Now that we've improved our variables, let's look at what each one does. The round value keeps track of the number of question rounds that have occurred. The question value is used to grab the random question from the remaining questions available. This template randomizes the questions in the quiz, so it's better for studying and learning the capitals of each state. The answer value is the choice that was chosen. It's compared to the answer column in the quiz data. The score value is the number of questions answered correctly. For each question with the right response, one point is added to the score. This is then used to calculate the percentage score. Personally, I like to keep the variables up at the top of the script, as it's something of an outline of the JavaScript code. We have rounds of questions, an answer will be chosen, and then a score is displayed. This template is designed to work as cut and paste code. You can just replace the quiz data with your own data. However, a project typically requires some sort of customization. That's why it's useful to learn JavaScript so you won't be limited to someone else's code. Here's an excellent example of how my own personal coding style influences how this project works. Scrolling past the quiz data, 
you can see the first time the Hype project actually does something with this data. The splice method is used here to remove a row from the quiz data. To be more specific, it's removing the first row. That's what the values mean in the parentheses. The splicing starts at zero, which is the first item in an array. That can be quite confusing. It's important to remember that arrays start at the number zero, not at the number one. Next, in the parentheses, there's a number one. That means remove one item. I left a comment here to explain what's happening. I'm removing the header row. That's what I mean by my own personal style. You don't need a header row in your multidimensional array, but I think it makes the data easier to read. If you don't care about that, then you don't need a header row, and you don't need this line of code to remove the header row. Next, we have another nice tool for working with arrays. It's the length property. This is a quick way to count the number of questions in the quiz. This value is important for two main reasons. One, we need to know when to end the quiz. By knowing the total number of questions, then the program can be stopped. There can be more than one solution to this particular problem. However, this value has a second purpose. It's used to calculate the final score. And as a side note, you can change the names of the variables if they're confusing to you. Here, I was trying to keep the names of my variables to just one word. However, that hinders the readability of the code. You can use longer names to better describe the purpose of the values. I also added console log messages so you can see what's going on behind the scenes. Again, this is just to help you out as a developer. It lists the number of questions in the quiz. It also shows that the length property is working. Next, we can move on to the next scene and the next custom JavaScript function. Both are called question. In this scene, you can see the shell of the quiz. There's an element to display the question, and there are four elements to display the choices, A, B, C, and D. Each one of these elements has a unique ID. For the questions, the ID name matches their answer letter, A, B, C, and D. The question element is simply called Q for question. If you slide the timeline cursor along the main timeline, you can see how the scene is controlled. At first, the scene is paused, but if an option is selected, the timeline starts playing and a new element appears. This white rectangular element shows if the response was correct or incorrect. This stays on screen for about one second, and then the custom JavaScript function is launched again. So, let's take a closer look at what's going on in the question function. First, it's looking to see if the number of rounds is equal to the total number of questions. If so, the quiz is over. Load the result scene. Otherwise, add one to the round number and then update the textual elements in the scene. What's the question and what are the choices? This is where the randomization occurs. The question is being chosen randomly from the quiz data. When a letter element is selected, the response function is loaded. It's a short one, but let's take a closer look at the code. This is a reusable function as it works based on the element that triggered it. That's the element ID part of the first line. Whatever element was clicked, get its name. That's the answer that was chosen. That response value is saved and then the main timeline is set to play. Looking more closely at the timeline, you can see that the second timeline action executes the answer function. This custom JavaScript code determines if the correct answer was chosen. So let's take a closer look at that script. It starts with a conditional. If the answer value equals the answer column of the current question, then the condition is true. Do you see the two sets of brackets? That's the multidimensional array in action. The first bracket gets the row of the current question. The second bracket gets the answer value, which is the answers column of the multidimensional array. If the condition is true, display a nice message and add a point to the score. 
It also highlights the selected answer with a green color. A console log message is included too. That helps with development of the quiz. Again, console log messages are optional, but they can really help with troubleshooting the code. If the condition is false, a failure message is shown, but it also highlights the correct answer. After the conditional, the splice method is used again. It removes the question from the multidimensional array. This continues until there are no more questions remaining. That's when the score scene is loaded. It displays the percentage of correct answers chosen. This is accomplished with the custom score function. Again, this is another short one. The first line calculates the percentage, and then the second line displays it. Nice and easy. So, even though this hype project has five separate custom functions, it's not a lot of code overall. Not counting the array, it's approximately four score of code. It's a patriotic template. It's also to show what's possible with hype. You can add significant interactivity to your website. With a little more work, a hype project could be added to a learning management system. Hopefully that information helps you out. Thanks for watching.